We've got another Penny Hunt and Phil episode. This is going to be episode number 33, boxes 52 and 53. Before I get into them, I want to make the quick announcement that I had mentioned that I'm not going to be doing any more trade for open boxes after I get through the next two sets of boxes that I had already agreed on trades with the subscribers. So these boxes were already checked from Stacy H. in Massachusetts to make sure he sent me circulated penny boxes. That being said, my favorite boxes to hunt are the ones from the Northeast, and I've got two more to hunt today. Hey everyone, it's Rob Fiennes Treasure and welcome back to my channel. As I mentioned in the intro, we've got a couple of Massachusetts State penny boxes from the great Northeast. Some of my best boxes have been from the Northeast, although in this book, we are really needing a lot of earlier dates, Denver mints, and San Francisco mints. Not so sure we're going to get any of the Denver or San Francisco mints in the Northeast boxes, but you never know. Hopefully, we get something for the album or an upgrade. That being said, I do want to remind you guys as well that if you haven't watched the first 32 episodes to please consider checking out the playlist that I have linked both down below as well as up here. That way you can get caught up on the action before seeing the progress in the album. For those of you already caught up, you'll recall that after the last Penny Hunt and Phil episode, we were able to add a few more spots and now we have 178 of the 234 spots in this album complete. We have every single coin other than a couple of small date varieties from 1944 all the way to the 1999, and we even have a 2000 white AM slotted in there for fun. Now, obviously, we still need a lot of the 30s, but again, a Denver, San Fran, Denver, San Fran, Denver, Denver, Denver. There's a 33 Philly might get, a 32 Philly. There's other dates that might be in these boxes, and hopefully they are, but it gets really tough as we get onto the first page. I think you guys know the drill. It's time to crack open these boxes, which I will do off camera. I'll open them up and I'll open up one at a time and we'll do a quick peek to make sure it's circulated, although it's been labeled as such. So I'm assuming it is. But once I get it open, I'll bring it back in. We'll do a quick little ender search on the top and then we'll get on with the hunt. All right, box 52 has been cracked open and we definitely have copper cents. I can see them. So we definitely have a circulated penny box. Let me go ahead and start cracking into rolls. And as soon as I find something, I'll bring you guys in and show you what it is. Roll number two, weed scent number one, a 1957 Denver. Roll number three, weed scent number two, 1958 Philadelphia. We're on roll number 10 and we have weed scent number three. And that's gonna be a 58 Denver. Roll 17, flipped it around. We've got a weed scent ender. That'll be the fourth one, or at least fourth weed scent of the hunt. That weed scent ender is gonna be a 1944 Philly. Roll 18, and we've got a different kind of foreign. It's the one with the starfish on the back. One cent from the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, 1980. It's our fifth foreign, four from Canada, One's a Laureate portrait from 1964. Roll number 27, Weed Scent number five. It's a 1953 minted in Philly. Roll number 32, and we finally got our sixth Weed Scent of the hunt. It's just gonna be a 46 Philadelphia, but it's just nice to see another Weed Scent at this point. Roll number 43, Weed Scent number seven. This one's gonna be a 1956 Denver. Roll number 46, wheat scent number eight. Hopefully the box can squeeze out one or two more for double digits, but all the ones it's getting are more common. 1958 Denver. Roll number 48, wheat scent number nine. One more to make 10. And this one is gonna be a 1941. So we'll just check it for any of the DDOs. Nothing there at the date. Don't see anything at Liberty. And nothing on the motto. Still, one more weed scent from 10. And that 1941 is the oldest of the box. Roll number 50. And we have some last roll luck because we're going to have weed scent number 10. It's just another 1957. A lot of late 50s 
weed scents in this box, but I'll take it, especially because it's 10 now. Same roll, another 50s weed scent, 1955D, that makes 11. We're still in the last roll and we're gonna have three weed scents in the last roll of the box. I hope that means the next box has a lot in the box. Oh, and that's an oldie. 1925 Philadelphia. <laughs> the last weed scent of the box is a 1925er. We'll have to see if I need that. I don't recollect, but either way, it's a 20s weed scent and uh, third in the roll, 12th for the hunt. So this box that started off really slow got a lot better at the end. I'll be back with the wrap up in just a second. All right, we have finished that first box. Like I mentioned, 12 weed cents. Really, it was a 50s show with a couple of 40s late, but that 1925 Philly will definitely make the box a lot better and a dozen weed cents is a good hunt. So nice comeback. We did get five modern Canadians with one Laurier portrait and we got that uh, Commonwealth of the Bahamas 1980 cent as well. We got seven 1959s, nothing special there and a pretty toasty 1969s, but uh, not the DDO. Copper Cup, almost, uh, well, just over halfway full, so we're probably gonna overflow it after the sister box. Let me clean up the discards. I'll pop the top on this and we'll get hunting and I'll bring you guys in if and when we have a first find. Roll number 56 of the 100 roll hunt and we're gonna have wheat scent number 13. And that's gonna be another 56 Denver. Roll 67, wheat scent number 14. Only the second of this box. And this one's gonna be a 1955 Philadelphia, which I didn't see it naked eye but we have to double check for that DDO and it's not. Still, 14th wheat scent, second of the box. We need to get on a hot streak if we're gonna get to 20 after two boxes. Roll 69, wheat scent 15, obverse facing, 1940, Philly. Roll number 70, wheat scent 16 gave me a scare. I thought it was gonna be an oldie based on what it looked like, but I can make it out. It's a 1945, not an oldie. Same roll, another wheat scent, number 17, 51 Denver. Roll number 77, and we're gonna have another foreign that's not Canadian. One cent from Barbados, 2004. Somebody was on vacation in the Bahamas and Barbados. Roll number 92, and we were stuck on 17 wheat cents for what feels like forever. But we do have wheat scent number 18 finally. Looks pretty new. You know what? That's a pretty nice 1947 Philadelphia. We'll take that and hopefully find a few more. Roll number 95 is going to be a pretty good roll because we're going to have wheat scent number 19. Looks pretty slick. And that's a teens with a mint mark, I believe. Um, I can't make it out. That could be a 1911 Denver. Or maybe it's an 18. Let me spend a few minutes on this and confirm what that is. I think I'm going to say 1911 Denver. But let me make sure and I'll be right back. So I spent a lot of time on this scent for a couple of reasons. One, in certain lights, it looked like it could have been a 1914, 13, or 12. But I think this is gonna show you that it's a 1918 Denver. You can just make out that eight. And the other diagnostics is that in 1918, they put the VDB back on the jacket base. And if you look on this one, just at the left bottom corner of his jacket and shoulder, you can just make out the top of the D and B. I figured I'd add this clip in since in the video editing process, I noticed you really couldn't see anything, but I'm pretty sure you can make out the VDB. You can't tell which letters are which. I mean, that could be the V, this could be the top of the D, and maybe the B is worn away, but you can definitely see something going on there in the exact spot where VDB should be. 
Just wanted to point that out because while editing, once again, this penny looked like it could have been a lot of different dates, but I'm 99% sure that these raised elements right here, or these sunken elements, I should say, are the designer's initials VDB, and that can only happen in 1918 and newer, and it's definitely not a 1919. So I'm pretty sure this is a 1918 Denver based on what I saw, but man, in certain lights for a split second, I was thinking it could have been a 14. I thought it was an 11 at first, but after wiping it away, I think that pretty much tells you the case. 1918 Denver. Man, thought we had an 11 D, thought we might have had a 14 D, but in the end, just a 1918 D. Pretty dang slick. All right, oldest of the box. That's a good find. I think we already have that one. Let's hope we find another. Oh, I almost forgot. I did also find in this roll, because I said this roll was a good roll, a King George the Sixth Canadian scent from 1942. We'll take it. Nice find. Roll number 98 is going to give us our 20th weed scent. This one's going to be... A 1949 with a mint mark, and that's an S. Good seeing the S mint mark. We just don't need it. Well, we finished that two box, 100 roll Massachusetts State penny hunt. Thank you, Stacy, for the boxes. We ended with 20 weed cents, and I'll take it. The second box was kind of light with only eight, but 20 for two boxes is better than I usually get, and that's not too bad, especially when we ended up getting one from the 20s and one from the teens. We didn't get any 30s, ironically, yet again, and the other 18 were made up of 50s and 40s, of course. We had a lot of Canadian scents, 17 in total, with one being a King George VI and two being the Laureate portraits, as well as a Barbados and a Bahamas coin. We also got 11 from the 59 year, two beauties, and two 69s, neither of which were the DDOs. Of course, we had to put the copper cup to work and that thing is overflowing and that's always a good find as well. Now that I've done that, I'm not sure if I have anything for the album, but let me go ahead and double check, comb through the finds and bring it back with a look if we have any upgrades or additions. Well, I've combed through the finds and we actually had an addition. I didn't know we needed it. That 1925 Philadelphia. I'll tell you, the 1918 D couldn't upgrade, and I thought maybe that 1947 would, but we already have a really nice 1947 in there, so didn't need to upgrade that. Now, after 53 boxes, we have 179 out of 234 of the possible spots in the album completed. I will take that. I didn't think we'd actually have any upgrades after 53 boxes, but we eked one out. Hopefully you're enjoying this Penny Hunt and Phil series. I know they're getting tougher and tougher to add things to the album, but whenever we can, that's always going to be a good hunt. If you are, I'd appreciate that thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting and thanks for watching.